Welcome everyone, once again, let's talk about media and communication. In the words of uh, this episode speaker, Young Eun Moon and colleagues, public trust in journalism has fall, fallen very, very low. So today with Young, we dive into the world of trust and credibility, specifically exploring why the public tends to place greater trust in doctors than in journalists. Okay, so with Young, let's explore the findings of a study that compare, compares public perceptions of those two institutions and uncover the factors that contribute to this disparity that we'll find out very, very soon. Young, welcome to our episode. Thank you for having me. Young, why have you and your colleagues decided to compare public trust in doctors and journalism? Um, so actually, like, uh, the originally it was... Uh, it was um, the original idea came from my colleagues and Jake's and Christie's idea, and I joined the team later. And like from my end, my interest in this topic tied to my own personal family, uh, personal and family background. Um, actually, my father is a medical doctor and he's a pain management specialist, and he really likes to speak with me. And whenever he would come uh, back from his work, he used to talk about what happened in his clinic that day, like for uh, from some good things to some frustration as a doctor treating his patients mm -hmm. and he used to say no matter how he explains things in detail with some scientific evidence people would just like a counter it with like uh something no 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 but like some youtuber or some blogger said like a blah 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 and uh they said that it's dangerous to get a shot like something like that and he's in his mid 60s so he has practiced medicine for 40 years but he said that he never had such situation uh 20 or 30 years ago but recently he has been encountering such uh cases every day so and i and i feel like this is like a somewhat similar with what uh, journalists are facing as information floats everywhere online and social media. So this is kind of like a why I became like interested in this topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The personal twist is very interesting here. What was so you were talking about new trends that uh, that your father also mentioned. So what was specifically missing uh, from the research that you wanted to address? Um, I think um, so I think like you know, when we think about like it, re the public trust really carefully, it's not just about like a something news media. I mean, like, I mean, of course, like uh, we are all aware that like a public trust decline in uh, is not a new thing. It has mm -hmm. been declining since the 1990s mm -hmm. or even longer than that. But what is particularly uh, striking though is like how steep uh, this decline has been in the last three years. And when we think about it really carefully, it's not just about news media, it's bigger than that. Like people don't trust the news media, journalism, absolutely. But you see a similar steep decline with politics, government, science, or even bank system. So this was like a kind of our, like a starting point, our uh, point of our study. Like you might have come across research on why people are losing trust in news media or politics, government respectively. But our team thinks that like all these declines are interconnected and it may actually represent a broader loss of uh, trust in the entire system. So we find, we found it really uh, interesting to think about what the overall trust decline across multiple major institutions means and news media is just one of them but as far as i'm aware uh there has been hasn't been like much attempt to identify the reasons of public distrust in journalism by comparing with other institutions mm -hmm. so we believe that like yeah, adopting such a comparative angle will help us to identify what are the key ingredients of public trust. Uh, in that way, we can think about the next step, like what steps should should these like, institutions take to repair their relationship with the people. So that is the reason why we try to compare news media industry as well as other institutions. And what did you find with these uh, comparisons? Yes. So our major, um, I think, um, like, let me 
let me, let me kick things off here. So as expected, there was a lack of trust in both healthcare and journalism, but people are generally tend to feel more trusting doctors than journalists. So this doesn't sound that surprising nor interesting at all, right? Like anybody can expect it, right? But why? Why people, uh, why do people trust doctors more? Because like what we found according to our findings, first, people think doctors are experts in their field. Also, second, people can more frequently interact with uh, individual doctors than they do with journalists. Makes sense, right? Like growing up, like we ran into medical doctors, like a pediatrician often, but not so much with journalists, not that much interaction with the journalists, right? So we identified uh, two um we we identified uh, two. <laughs> Sorry, I think I was a little bit lost no here. Worries. No worries. Yeah, so we identified the two elements as ingredients of public trust, expertise, and engagement. Okay. So then our question will be, what happens when there is less expertise and fewer engagement opportunities? So um, I think our title of our paper, it uh, speaks itself, like uh, journalists get fact-checked while doctors can be the fact-checkers. So before going to see a doctor, People searched online first about their symptoms, medicines, like side effects, something like that. And then ask doctors, like, I found this inform information online. Is it really true? But for journalists, it's a total, totally different story. Like uh, people catch the news on TV or some random places, then turn to um, turn turn to the internet to fact check. Uh, by like a, it's kind of like a do own research. So like uh, online is more experts than like a journalist. So there are more like a fancy terms like uh, that may relate to this situation like a heuristic processing or a systemic processing. But just in a simple simple term, uh, we think journalists get fact-checked while doctors are fact-checkers. We believe like this title describes the situation more intuitively. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very interesting. And as practical implications, practical implications of your study, and to uh, follow up on what you just said, so you, you indicate in the article that this might be uh, impl uh, practical implications, for example, investment in journalism, education, and training, probably a public media organization that is uh, publicly funded, and article fact checking by social media companies before they are shared. So what can you tell us can you tell us more about that practical implications of what you found? Yes. So when we think about like how journalists have professionalized in American context, we talk about like norms like objectivity and independence, like some those the norms like that. Um, and these norms have developed by keeping a distance from the communities they cover. So for example, independence not only means like being separate from positions of power, but it also means maintain maintaining a critical distance from the public and people so that they can report certain events objectively as a third party perspective. Um, that's how journalists have maintained like a legitimacy by setting themselves apart from the public. So because um, news media has a long history of creating distance between the public and themselves, journalists approach rebuilding public trust by using emphasize, um, you know, like when um, journalists, um, I mean, journalists approach to rebuilding public trust, like uh, usually emphasizing like trust us because we are objective, we are independent, we are accountable. And such norms are known as like a journalist expertise. But like according to our findings, like a trust isn't solely built on such norms of expertise, but in order to foster trust, like expertise must be accompanied by meaningful engagement with their audiences. In other words, like uh, in the journalism field, like expertise and engagement are often considered as opposing values because expertise is built on keeping distance from the public while engagement is closing the distance. But to gain the public trust, journalists should aim for engagement not as a replacement for the expertise, but rather something that enhances their expertise. And like recently, in fact, like, 
quite many news outlets are putting a lot of effort for engagement, engagement like using engagement metrics, newsletter, and making their journalists um, engage on social media or some newsrooms try public newsroom, like a, where journalists and community members can meet to get to know each other and do some like a live Q&A session, engaging in community events, like something like that. Yeah, so I think like a, such like, um, uh, balancing between the like a uh, um, expertise as well as like a personal engagement, I think like yeah, what is more important is to balance the expertise with deliberate effort to meet people where they are. Of course, makes sense. And your article is very clear about research limitations, and I would like to know more about uh, more venues for future research ahead of us. Yes, so. Uh, we did a, like a big survey of like a thousand Americans, but when it came to the interviews, we only managed to like with uh, interview with only 31 people. So mm -hmm. yes, our sample size does not like represent all Americans and our interviews were only about an hour long. So it must be too short window to truly grasp what people think about like a two different professions comprehensively. And, you know, like a qualitative research has like a pros and cons. It's really great too for getting the bigger picture, some hidden unseen concepts. But if uh, someone asked me how much or to what extent how engagement expertise affect trust in professionals well then like an answer uh for that is not yet known but actually our next paper uh which is like a currently underway mm -hmm. is okay we now know that like a specialized expertise and personal engagement are crucial now we are digging into when when people lean more towards expertise, when they believe engagement takes a spotlight. So we are diving deep with this question more quantitative way, like using structure equation modeling. So stay tuned. Yeah, that's definitely like a tip for our for our listeners. Um, Young, this has been a very clear and straight on point episode. And I would like to ask you for a challenging uh, thing that I always ask uh, the speakers of this show is if you had to sum up your talk today in one or two sentences, what would it be? Personally, I like the doctors are fact checkers and journalists are fact check, yeah. but yeah. what do you have to share with us, the punchline of this talk? I mean, like, uh, if, even though like we began this research by focusing only two institutions, news media and healthcare, but I believe like a two elements, uh, key elements that we identify, like uh, expertise and engagement, like, um, I think like that can be applied to so many other areas such as government, companies, schools, and any other institutions. So if you are working one of the institution, uh, remember those like a two uh, key elements. And at the same time, like when it comes to like a people who distrust them or who have complained about unpleasant and frustrating experiences in your institution, I would say that like a one possible strategy is to help that person distinguish between the system system and uh, the individuals working within that institution because like I would say that most of people used to conflate the two so if they can like distinguish between these like for example the healthcare system is flawed but my doctor is trustworthy I think like that could be if they can like help them to distinguish the two then that could be a game changer so providing opportunities for a meaningful connection with the audience on a human level will bring uh, about like some significant change if you want to gain trust of your audience perfect great episode young thank you very much thank you uh for our listeners and our viewers are watching us on youtube you can find all the resources all the materials of um young and colleagues talk at let's talk about media and communication website you can also listen to this episode wherever you get your podcast you can subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on twitter at Cogitatio LTA.